Oh, if you're a complete beginner, I want to learn the handstand from zero. zero. You want to be following this juicy tutorial. So the first part I'm going to focus on is the strength part of the handstand. So if you can't even hold a handstand against the wall, I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step progression that will teach you from a push-up position into a handstand against the wall. So you want to start in a push-up position. This is the first progression. You want to start in this push-up position. You want to make sure that you can hold it for at least 20 to 30 seconds before moving on to the next progression. Now, the second progression that you want to work on is from the push-up position, slide to the pike position. So you want to start in a push-up position and you want to slide your legs up like this. And you want to hold this position for like five seconds and then walk backwards. Now you want to do it again and want to do it for around three to five reps. Make sure to have the hold in the pike position. So the third progression that you want to do is a pike hold with your feet elevated. Let me present it to you. So you want to get like a chair or something you can lift your legs up with and you just want to do a hold like this. You want to get it to around 20 to 30 seconds before moving to the next progression. The next step into learning the handstand is learning the handstand kick up. So you want to find a wall. You probably have a wall in your room. But if you don't, you can find a wall, okay? I, I guarantee you, you can find a wall somewhere. Um, and you want to practice the kick up first. So how do you practice the kick up? You practice the kick up by doing the kick up. So this is how a kick up looks, right? And bear in mind, this is not how your first kick up is going to look. All right, so once you get good, this is how your kick-up should look, right? This is how a kick-up looks. Now, in the beginning, it's going to look something like this. You're not going to be able to kick-up at all. Like, you're just going to flop around like a fish. Now, that's fine. That's how I was in the beginning as well. You're going to just keep practicing it over and over again. You're going to do around six to eight reps on both legs. So, you're going to switch legs. So, one leg is always in front. And then you want to switch so the other leg is in front right you can also practice it with both legs but that's a bit more advanced that's a bit harder i'd recommend you to practice with one leg up in the front first now with time as you practice the kick up you will get better at it you will have more control right main thing that people have a problem with is the power they use in the kick up right most people don't have the strength or most people don't know the strength required to do the kick up right so you're not really really try your best to kick up it will be scary at first but you just want to get over that it's scary yeah but at the same time if you're not gonna push past that barrier you're never gonna get your hands done so you just need to get over that it's as simple as it sounds honestly like i was terrified as well but you gotta get over it boy okay now once you're able to do the kick up that's when you want to do the hands and hold right so you kick up it's probably gonna look something like this like, you're just going to do this, but you want to try your best to find a hold, right? So you want to kick up, hold it. You want to hold it for around, you want to get to around 15 to 20 seconds before moving on to the next progression. And the next progression is this. So you're going to be doing the handstand stomach facing the wall now, right? So you're going to walk up the wall like this. And you're going to try your best to hold it here as close to the wall. At first, you're going to be a bit further away from the wall because you're not going to have the strength, the mobility, blah, 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 yada, yada. That's not important right now. First thing, you just want to hold it. You want to, even if you're far away from the wall, that's fine. Just try your best to walk as close to the wall as you can and then eventually you progress. Again, you want to hold it to 15 to 20 seconds per set and then eventually week by week, just get closer to the wall. Just get comfortable being upside down. That's the number one thing. You want to learn how to be upside down. The next step will be a hybrid of the handstand stomach facing to the wall. So you want to get this handstand hold. You want to get into this position. And then you want to walk down slowly like this. As slow as you can into almost like a push-up position. Now once you get here, you want to walk back up. You probably don't see me, but that's fine. You want to walk back up and do your best. At first, it will be really difficult. You want to get to around three to five reps. And if you struggle to go all the way down, don't go all the way down. Slowly progress, right? Go as low as you can while being able to go back up. Now, the next step is the most intimidating step of them all. Is moving away from the wall. Doing the kick-ups away from the wall. Now, most people give up here because they just give up. Um, because of the fear of falling, the fear of being upside down, not having control, hurting yourself. So how do you get over that fear? 
is learning how to bail out of the handstand safely. So basically not falling and hurting yourself. So it's pretty simple. So imagine you're doing a cartwheel, right? When you're doing a cartwheel, you kind of go like this, right? That's what you want to do when you bail out of the handstand. So let's say you're in a handstand. You kick up, but you lose control. You just move to the side. Most important thing is to keep your composure. You want to make sure you don't panic, right? If you panic, you're going to lose control. You're going to probably hurt yourself. So you don't want to panic. How do you not panic? Just know that your body will protect itself. Just, just trust yourself. Don't panic. Do not panic. The best way to get over the fear is just to practice bailing. Just practice bailing out of the handstand. And it'll feel more comfortable, right? The more you do it, the less scary it gets. And you just want to take that step. You want to take that first step. Because if you don't, you'll never be able to kick up into a handstand because you'll always be too scared. So take that first step. Now, once you've taken that first step, and once you've learned how to bail out of the handstand, once you're not too scared of holding the handstand, the technique spider fingers, right? So the spider fingers is the main thing when it comes into the balance of the handstand, right? So I'm going to show you right now what the spider finger technique is. So this is how it looks. When you're on the floor, you want to squeeze your fingers like this, and it kind of looks like spider legs. And your fingers should be doing this motion while you're in a handstand. Like any attempt that you're doing, this is how your fingers should look. Okay, so now that you know what the spider finger technique is, I'm going to show you an exercise to practice the spider finger technique, right? So if you're in a handstand, how do you prevent yourself from falling that way or this way? Now that's where the spider finger technique comes into play, right? So you want to start and go on your knees, be in a kind of a push-up position, but you want to reach forward. Now when you reach forward, you want to like grab the floor like it's two large balls and you want to grab them, right? And you want to pull your body like this with your fingers. And try not to move your hips, try to just move it with your fingers. And then you want to push back, right? And these two cues, pulling in and pushing back, is what you're going to be doing in a handstand to keep balance, right? Now, where does this come into the handstand? When you're in a handstand, when you fall backwards, you pull yourself with your fingers to prevent yourself from falling backwards. If you fall forwards, use your palm to prevent yourself from falling forwards. That's why it's very important to practice this step. I believe this is the most important step into the balancing of the handstand. Because if you're not gripping the flow of your fingers like a spider, you're never going to be able to hold it. You want to make sure that your fingers are strong here and you know how to push away with your palm. From here on out, it's just about drilling the handstands, drilling that spider finger technique. So you want to... Every time you kick into a handstand, you want to make sure that you're gripping the floor with your fingers. It's all about that spider finger technique because if you're not practicing it, you're not going to be able to balance the handstand. That's the most important part. Because if you see me do a handstand whenever, my fingers are never flat on the ground. They're always gripping the floor as hard as they can. That's how you learn the balance of the handstand. Now, you just want to practice it over and over again. I know you're going to want to give up, but you can't. You need to stay consistent. You want to practice it at first like three days a week. Eventually, you can work your way up. More, the more endurance you gain, the more comfortable you get with it, the better you get, right? At first, you might not even be able to hold it for a second. Eventually, you'll be able to hold it for two seconds, three seconds, four or five. And before you know it, you'll be holding a 30-second handstand, right? But it's just about perseverance. It's about never giving up, never backing down. And so 